Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to cover how to set up your audio interface for use inside of Ableton Live. Before we begin, just a quick reminder to leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button. This will help me continue to bring valuable content to awesome viewers like you. The first step to getting your sound card up and running is to install the necessary drivers for your specific interface. Typically, the interface will come with a disk or at least some type of link to the website for you to install the drivers. If you have to go to that website, normally you just go to the company website, you look for the support section, and then look for the download for your specific model. If your interface does not have any additional drivers available, you will want to download a driver called ASIO. ASIO is a computer sound card driver protocol for digital audio. Um, it's made by Steinberg and it more or less provides a low latency solution for your DAW or software. So to install ASIO, you will want to go to your preferred web browser and just type in ASIO and you will go to this site or you could just essentially type in this website address. Then you'll want to scroll down. If you're from a different language, then just choose your preferred language. I speak English, so I chose the English version. You'll want to download that. So after you have installed ASIO and your drivers, you will want to go into Ableton Live and you'll want to go to Options, Preferences, and in here, you're going to select your driver type. It will probably be a, at a default point um, saying something similar to this. What you'll want to do is click on ASIO, or if your interface has its own set of drivers, you'll want to select those. But just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use the ASIO drivers. Um, the next thing you'll want to do is make sure that ASIO for all is selected, or as I mentioned earlier, if you have your own set of drivers for your specific interface, you can select that. The next step is to go into hardware setup, and you'll just want to make sure that your interface is the only one that is turned on. My interface is the Mackie Big Knob, and as you can see, that is the only one I have selected. So the next thing you're probably going to want to adjust is your buffer size. The buffer size correlates to the amount of time that your CPU has to process the audio. The higher the buffer size, the more time the computer has, and therefore the less CPU resources it will take to run your uh, DAW. So if you find yourself using a lot of CPU and getting a lot of glitches and simply unable to properly work with your audio, then you may want to try increasing your buffer size. If you find that there's a lot of lag, but your computer is not working that hard, you could try decreasing the buffer size. Ableton actually recommends that you change the buffer size in doubles of two. So if you're going to go down from 256, you would go down to 128. Or if you're going to go up from 256, you would go to 512 and so forth. Okay, now that we have our interface selected, the next thing you may want to adjust is your sample rate. Now, I personally don't hear audible difference between 441 and any of the above you know so some people will say oh i only work at 96k or something like that but i've been working in audio for over 10 years and the difference to me is just negligible apparently if you're working with film they recommend 48 kilohertz because it supposedly aligns better with the footage but I don't know, I've never actually had an issue with lining my audio up with any footage I've created. So, you know, maybe there's a benefit there, maybe there's not. I personally don't know. Maybe they, maybe they fix that somehow in the digital world we live in now. One other trick you can do if you find yourself using a lot of CPU is trying to lower your sample rate. The higher the sample rate, 
the more strain you're going to have on your CPU, but I personally wouldn't recommend going below um, 44.1 kilohertz. And that's about it for your preferences inside of Ableton Live. One more step I'm actually going to recommend on this list is to go into your audio settings on Windows. Um, let's just type sound. You'll want to go to change system sounds. If it's actually listed, then make sure your audio interface is the default device. To do this, you simply highlight your interface, click set default, click apply, and then click OK. This will prevent your computer from like switching over to a different device or maybe switching back to your built-in sound card if you restart your computer or if it gets shut down. All right, assuming that your settings are correct and your unit and speakers are on and the volume is up, you should be able to now go into Ableton Live and hear what's, you know, what's going on, whether you're playing a synth or whatever else. If you run into some troubles with your setup, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to offer some advice. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you all back for the next video. Until then, take care and have an amazing day.